Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to talk about what is next for Fujifilm. But before we get into that, please remember to check out the Liam Photography Podcast. You can find it anywhere the podcasts are found. And I have a massive back catalog of episodes that you can go back and listen to at your leisure, with the current episode count being at 340. The most recent episode I released this past Thursday is my second interview with Dr. Larry Tiefenbrunn, owner, founder, and inventor of the Platypod series of photography and videography products, which I absolutely love. All right, so let's get into this video. So as you may or may not be aware, Fujifilm has discontinued a whole bunch of their cameras this year. They've discontinued the X-T30 Mark II. They've discontinued the GFX 50R, which I have here. Love this camera. They discontinued the X-E4. I also have one of those. They've discontinued the X-T4, which makes sense because they have the X-T5. I have two X-T4s. And now they've also discontinued the X-Pro3. So what is next for Fujifilm? Well, it's an interesting question, and it's kind of hard to say with how Fujifilm does things. Now, there is a Fuji X Summit later on this month, on May 24th, where they're going to announce, supposedly, at least two new cameras. But the word is that one of the two is going to be the XS20, which is the successor to the XS10, which Fujifilm released in 2020. Now, the XS10 is a hybrid camera. It's made for both photographers and videographers or content creators like myself. And it has been on the market for three years. But even though I know Fuji's not going to listen to me, I think the XS20 should be a lower priority. And the reason why I say that is the GFX 50R came out five years ago and hasn't been replaced or refreshed with a new version. Fuji came out with the GFX 100, then they came out with the 50S, then they came out with the 50R, then they came out with the 100S, and then they came out with the 50S Mark II. They haven't done a second version of this body yet, and I really think this one is the one that's most overdue to be refreshed. I think they should do a 50R Mark II with a newer generation of the 51.4 megapixel CMOS sensor that's in this body, and I also think they should add phase detect autofocus. It doesn't need in-body image stabilization like the 50S, because the 50S is more of a DSLR style mirrorless camera. This is more for landscapes, studio portraits, and studio product photography. So you don't really need IBIS in this body. Just make a Mark II of this one with a newer version of the sensor that reads out faster. Give us phase detect autofocus. And that would pretty much be it. I'd be happy. I do love this camera. I'm not planning on getting rid of mine anytime soon. So, like I said, they replaced, they discontinued the X-T4. Not a big deal because they've already released the X-T5, which has the new X-Trans 5th generation sensor and 40 megapixel resolution, which is extremely impressive. Now, the X-E4 is due for a replacement, but there's been no talk yet of an X-E5. So right now, the X-E line is dead, and the GFX 50R line is dead. The X-T4 is replaced with the X-T5, so the X-T line is still going. But the X-T30 Mark II has already been discontinued, and that's not a very old body. It hasn't been around for a very long time. So are they going to do an X-T40 maybe later this year? Hopefully they will. I really hope so. Now, what about the X-Pro line? Because now the X-Pro line is dead because they've discontinued the X-Pro3. Now, I just got this body a little over a month ago, and I absolutely love it. I think it's a fantastic body for street photography. In many ways, it rivals the super popular X-100V. That's why this camera has also been so popular. If you haven't been paying attention, not only is the X-100V impossible to find, but so is this body, the X-Pro3. And now it's been discontinued. So, Fuji was asked recently at a press event, a couple of months ago, one of their top executives was asked about the, specifically the X-Pro line and where the X-Pro4 was, when it would be coming. And the only thing he would say is, it'll be ready when it's ready. That's all he would give them. 
So as I said a moment ago, the X-Pro line is completely up in the air right now. In my opinion, this is my humble opinion, but Fuji's not going to listen to me, of course. I think the priority should be to replace the GFX 50R with a 50R Mark II. Now, the other rumor that's circulating right now is the two cameras that Fuji's getting ready to release are the XS20 and possibly another GFX 100 body. And I'm thinking, why? You already have the original 100, which was just discontinued as well. You've got the 100S, which has been super popular. You've already had two generations of that body. How about a second generation of this body, which you haven't done yet? You've done two of the 50Ss. You've done two of the 100s. How about another 50R? That's what I would really like to see, especially when this model is over five years old. And then, in my opinion, the next one that needs to be replaced is the X-Pro3. Uh, release the X-Pro4. Now, what they can do to make the X-Pro4 more enticing for shooters of the X-Pro3, I honestly don't know. The X-Pro3 is a fantastic body. I love the sub-panel on the back that gives you the film simulation window that looks like the piece of film box that we would tuck in the little pocket on the back of our cameras back when I shot film. I love that. I love the fact that the LCD is hidden. I actually think it's a great thing because it makes me feel feel more like I'm shooting film again. Um, so what they could do to improve this body, I don't know. Uh, possibly add image stabilization because I don't believe this one has it. Um, maybe bump it up to the 40 megapixel sensor, although to be honest, I think 40 megapixels is overkill for this body. But those are just some things they could do. Or maybe just update the processor and the sensor, put in the new X-Trans 5 26 megapixel sensor, which is in the X-H2S, give it faster sensor readout to get rid of the, the bidding and the, and the warping and stuff when you're shooting with the electronic shutter, and just call it the X-Pro3 Mark II. Uh, instead of the X-Pro4, they could do that. Uh, they could definitely definitely stand to do an X-E5. Hopefully, they'll continue this line. This one isn't as big a priority, uh, but I do think they need to release a replacement for this by the end of this year or beginning of next year. So, in my humble opinion, we need an X, uh, a GFX 50R Mark II, and we need a replacement for the X-Pro3 and then the other camera that's most overdue for a replacement is the X100V. Now, I don't have one of those in my group of cameras. I had one recently on loan from Fujifilm USA, uh, but it was just so I could review it, do an unboxing review video, do some content videos around that camera, and then I had to send it back uh, in the early part of April. So I don't have that body anymore, but I did absolutely love that body. And that body, again, is three plus years old, so it is due for a refresh. However, as Boo Ray Perry and I talked about recently on my podcast, what more can they do to the X100 line? Maybe the 40 megapixel sensor, although again, I think it's overkill. Just use the fifth generation 26.1 megapixel sensor that the X-H2S has. Um, it doesn't need IBIS. Some people want IBIS in the X100 line. I think it's unnecessary because uh, it's more of a street photography camera. Maybe upgrade the 23 millimeter lens from the F2 version to the 1.4 version, which you can buy for the interchangeable lens bodies. They do offer a 23 F2 as well as a 23 F1.4. Maybe go with the F1.4 lens on the next iteration of the X100 and uh, give us a little more aperture, maybe upgrade the built-in ND filter to five or six stops so you can use the maximum aperture during the daylight and not have everything blown out or washed out. Uh, but those are my opinions. Please let me know down in the comments what you think Fujifilm should do next, what camera you're most looking for and excited about. Please leave a comment down below. Also remember to subscribe to the channel, watch all the videos, like them, comment on them, share them out on social media, hit the little bell icon so you can be notified when new videos release. I will have a new giveaway coming up in another month or so, um, so you're definitely going to want to be subscribed to this channel as well as to my podcast so you find out as soon as that contest starts and you can get your entries in. All right, that's going to wrap up this video. I will see you in the next one.